What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Man, do I have a present for you. Herald of Perfection. Ladies and gentlemen, where where is Big Bruce 94? Derek Kingsley, where you at, bro? <laughs> Guys, for any of you that are OGs on this channel, I'm talking like 10 years ago. Uh, I got to give a shout out to my buddy, my homie, my brother from another mother, Big Bruce 94. He used to be a Yugi tuber. He really didn't post all that much. But man, he was one of the first friends uh, I made in this game, along with his brother Michael. Shout out to you, man. Uh, I've got a deck profile from 10 years ago of Herald of Perfection, and I saw this on Robbie Cole's channel, and I, I squealed like a girl a little bit because uh, this this brought back some fucking memories. Man, guys, you got to go back, look at that 10 year old video. Just type in like Herald of Perfection on my channel, search, and uh, you'll find it <laughs> with my shitty 240p camera. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that profile was so old. Like, we were we were using things like Moki Moki and uh, Giatano Megami because it was a level 6 vanilla that was, like, searchable. You could use ARA to get it out and then use, like, a Fairy Cheer Girl to make Herald of Perfection beefy AF. <laughs> so now we're in an era with Link Monsters and the whole nine. All we had back then was, like, Synchros and Sonic Seeds and things. But anyway, guys, be sure to like the video and favorite it and hit the bell and all that fun stuff because we got some daily uploads coming back here very soon. So what is Herald of Perfection? Notice that this isn't Herald of Ultimateness. This is the OG Herald of Perfection. So you can only ritual summon it with Dawn of the Herald, and then during either player's turn, it's an Omni Negate. The opponent activates the Spell Trap or Monster Effect. You send a very tight monster from your hand to the grave, negate the activation if you do destroy it. It's got 1,800 attack and a fat-ass 2,800 defense. So if you've got five fairies in your hand, your Herald of Perfection is five negates. Um, I was just testing a hand where I ended a board with Arc Light and Herald with four fairies in the hand, and the next card I was drawing was Archlord Christia, and I had three fairies in the grave. So there you go. You tribute the Herald, and then your perfection's back online. Yeah, it's it's a fun deck. It's really, really cool. Um, just from the test hands that I've seen, it's, it's a lot of freaking fun. So this actually came in uh, first place at a 92-man event in Israel of all places. I thought Israel fell within the TC or the uh, OCG bounds, but it's actually in the TCG. And it was using a Star Seraph Scepter and Sovereignty, aka a stick and chair package, along with some things that we've seen in Drytron like Eva, Diviner of the Herald, um, things like pre-prep and preparation of rites, but then I'm using things like Ritual Sanctuary and of course the Dawn of the Herald spell. We've got some Super Poly targets here with Super Poly in the side. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Obviously you're playing one copy of Archlord Christia. You got four fairies, you drop it out. Uh, the opponent can't, or neither player can special summon him. If it's sent from the field, the grave plays on top of the deck. It's pretty good. Um, then we got Scepter and Sovereignty, aka Stick and Chair. These are the OG two-card combo extenders. So what is it that these things do? So you got Scepter. When it's normal or special summon, you get to add a Star Seraph monster from your deck to hand, except Scepter, and then Xyz monster that was summoned using three or more monsters, including this card on the field, as a material gains this effect. When it's Xyz summoned, you can target one other card on the field, destroy it, and if you do, draw a card. Then we've got Sovereignty, which can't be used as material for an Xyz Summon, except for an Xyz Summon that uses three or more monsters as a material. And then if you no more special summon a Star Seraph monster, monsters, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, you get to draw a card, and then you can special summon it if it is a Star Seraph monster. So if you draw into another chair or another scepter, you can bring it out, and now you've got three level fours for an Xyz Summon. This is a classic two-card combo. Um, I don't know if, du or not Dueling Book, if EDO Pro is uh, glitched, but I thought the way that you could use Scepter was that you could summon Scepter, search for the chair, and then activate the chair on a new chain in order to drop it out and draw a card. I could be wrong on that, um, but I do know for a fact what does work is that if you open up Stick and Chair, you can summon the stick and then activate the chair on chain link 2 with the Scepter being chain link 1, and you can chain block the opponent. They have to respond to the sovereignty. So, a little food for thought there. <clears throat> we were playing one copy of Ash uh, and two copies of Droll. I guess he just wanted to have more options. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that. Uh, three copies of Diviner, the Herald. Um, yeah, it's it's Herald. It's it's a good ass card. We're playing three copies of Orange Light. We're playing one copy of Cyber Egg Angel. So if this card's summoned, notice it just says summoned. You can add a Machine Angel spell or one Ritual Sanctuary from your deck to your hand. You can only use the effect once per turn. So any way you summon this thing, you can get to your field spell. 
playing two copies of Eva, card's good. Two copies of Joel Lockbird, uh, three copies of Herald of Perfection, and notice that this is not a hard once per turn. So yeah, just keep that in mind. One copy of Ben 10, because it's Ben 10. We got three pre-preps of rights, three desires, because we're playing a lot of three ofs, uh, one terraforming, three prep of rights, three dawn of the herald. So this is used to summon herald of perfection. You got to tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total level is equal to exactly six. When perfection is ritual summoned by this effect, you can banish it from your grave to target one of the monsters in your grave that was tributed for the summon. Return that target to the hand. So here's a little, little cute play that you can do. You can summon out diviner, dump the arc light, get a search, activate dawn, tribute the herald since it's now level six, get out the perfection, banish dawn, get the herald back to your hand. It's free real estate. It's pretty damn good. If you open up Diviner, you're pretty much guaranteed to get Herald out on the board. Then we're playing one Call By because hand traps suck. And then one Ritual Sanctuary. So you can discard a spell, add a light ritual monster or a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. And then you can shuffle any number of spells from your grave into the deck to target one light fairy monster in your grave whose level equals the number of cards you shuffled into the deck. Um, special summon it, and then you can only use each effect once per turn. So this is good for like graveyard manipulation. If you got a few too many fairies in your grave for Christia, you can use this to shuffle back like two spells to get out a level two fairy. Um, there was a hand that I tested where I activated this, sent back a dawn and a preparation of rights to get out Herald from the grave to synchro off with the Cyber Egg Angel that I special summoned uh, to get out Arc Light, which is how I end up with perfection in Arc Light. So yeah. Uh, extra deck. We are playing one Starving Venom, Ints, and Mud Dragon for the Super Valley targets inside. Two Arc Light, one Beatrice, one Constellar Diamond, one Ouroboros, one Deltaros, one Boral Sword, one Phoenix and Unicorn, one Mascarina, one Mirage, and one Link Karibo. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, nothing really too fancy about the extra deck other than these three cards here. Um, Delta Rose can pop a card, main phase two, you make this on top of it, and then it, this is kind of a cute card, because while it has an exceeds material, neither player can send cards from their deck to the grave, so your foolish burial plays are, are out, and any other plays that make you want to dump cards to the grave, and then any card that returns from the grave to the hand is banished instead, and then during either player's turn, an opponent's dark monster activates the effect, you can detach a material from it and negate the activation if you do destroy it. So yeah, you get another free negate there. Uh, side deck, we're playing three testicles, aka sphere mode. I don't know why um my guess is that he probably wanted to use this instead of nibiru just because of the fact that he wouldn't want to get rid of his own board if he was trying to break the opponent's board because in a deck like this where you're really being a control deck um you're not always going to necessarily be in a bad situation if the opponent somehow builds a board because the opponent's not going to know how many negates you have in your hand unless you have no cards so they may not want to take the risk unless they know they can play through like one or two negates you know what i mean um, you know, if you only got two cards in your hand that are negates, but you're sitting on a four card hand, the opponent's going to think you got a maximum of four negates unless they know what's in your hand, right? So you may not always need to clear the entire board with Nibiru. You may just need Sphere Mode to break apart the board. Keep in mind, too, that Sphere Mode also has the effect that you shift control to this card's owner during the end phase of the next turn. So you give them Sphere Mode, you pass, it goes back to them, they pass, you get the Sphere Mode back. And it's a card that can't attack, but the opponent can't target it for attacks or by card effects. So if it's the only card on your field, they can't even attack. So something interesting to keep in mind. Uh, one Lancia, two DD Crow, three Cosmic, three Super Poly, and three Solemn Judgment. And that's pretty much the deck. It's a really interesting concept. I highly encourage you to try it out. Um, just looking at some hands here. <clears throat> you can kind of see how this deck functions. You know, you can activate the Sanctuary, Summon Scepter, get the Sovereign, prep to search, uh, use this to uh, ditch the Desires maybe to get something, or just go Desires, Banish 10, draw 2. Um, is it the most consistent thing in the world? No, I don't believe so. I think that this is just something that pantsed a lot of people in Israel, and they didn't know what to do. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this hell of a deck profile. I mean, I'm still just kind of in shock because it's like, damn, Herald of Perfection in 2021. I never thought I would see the day. So big shout out to Big Bruce 94 Guys, go and check out that deck profile from 10 years ago. I might go and watch that. This is a little run down memory lane because, uh, God, that, that deck, looking back on it now, is so bad compared to the support that we have now. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.